I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. I'm Arthur Boyle of Performance Appraisal Services. We're residential real estate appraisers with a company founded in 1994 by Mike Gianelli and I in the basement of my house in Malden. We've since grown to have offices in Malden and Pembroke. We serve the Eastern Mass counties, including Cape Cod. A good client for us is an attorney or a private landowner or a private property owner who's going through a probate process or a divorce division of property. Call us at 781-293-6900. Ask for Arthur Boyle or Amanda Boyle Grazioso. Our first name is Performance. Good evening. Um, tonight is Monday, June 5th, 2017. Lisa Cullody, our health agent, is present. Gary Fine is present. And Gail McSweeney is not here due to um, a, another situation she needed to take care of. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of the proceeding pro produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made and made in open session will and are being recorded. We're actually being recorded by not only PAC TV but uh, Pembroke News as well. Gary, um, we have Great, thank you. payroll to sign. Sign. I would like to make a motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting dated May 22nd, 2017, as written. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Moving right along, um, don't have any correspondence. We have a few minutes before Paul Williams comes in and speaks to us. Um, can we take this uh, you can take anything. request for the new perk? You can take anything okay. else, Madam Chair, other than the two time scheduled appointments. You may take up anything, and none of them, if, if the applicants were here early, you'd be at liberty to take them early, as there is no um, a button of um, for those agenda items. The board has received a handwritten letter dated May 31st, 2017 to who it may concern. Please extend my perk test for my lot, number F as in Frank 86 on Taylor Street. There have been no changes to this lot. Thank you, Daniel Costanzo. Mailing address of 254 Taylor Street in Pembroke. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept this extended perk request. Do I hear a second? <coughs> How long is that extended to? It can be extended in perpetuity as long as it is requested in writing every year. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that one's all set. Um, want to talk to us about the health risks of the gas pipeline? I am not obtained any new information on that. That was a request being done by the Sierra Nevada group that was a request of the board in, in writing to support it along with the supporting data. Okay. I have not received any supplemental material to that submitted. Other than this? Other than was one written us. request that was made. Okay. It would seem from the information I'm receiving is most boards of health are choosing to support 
being opposed to the pipeline because of the environmental damage and risks associated with it. Um, but I do not have any data other than that submitted request in writing from the Sierra Nevada group. When you say most boards of health, from my local, record, all local boards of health in this area are being asked to support this ban. The, the request to halt it. Right. My recollection from the email. I don't know if it was one of the attachments or something that you had said. I think it was one of the attachments. Boston supporting it, for example. I, I thought they made reference to, at the time, 20 boards of health mm -hmm. out of the 351. But sure. they're probably not going. Well, maybe they well, are keep going. Keep in mind, we just got the request last week. So right. like all other boards of health, for example, in Western Mass, there's boards of health that maybe meet once a month, if that. So I would imagine that number is constantly evolving. Not unlike the T21 number. That's a rapidly evolving number, I would expect. And they, in the correspondence, they asked for, I think, the, the deadline for all the all the local towns were June 30th to sign on. You are so correct. So we do have one other meeting. You do have one other meeting if you would like to do some more research. I personally have not obtained any more information on that, but certainly we can get updated numbers on boards of health. Well, I think that it would make sense at this point, um, due to the nature of the topic that we table this for our next Board of Health meeting. Um, I'd like to ask all members um, of the board to read it in depth and be ready to vote. They did make mention, do not hesitate to reach out to them if you have specific questions. That is the Sierra Nevada group that is proponing this, this um, advice to halt okay. this letter to Governor Baker. Certainly a hot topic, and, and there's, there's money behind it. Obviously. You know. <clears throat> yeah, obviously there's money money both ways behind it for, for what I, I think are very obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to table that, um, Sheila, with a um, review and vote uh, because we have to have our answer in from June 30th. This is not an article that I want to continually float around. So, um, no, I think at next meeting you'd have to make a recommendation in order to, to accommodate their deadline for the letter. Exactly. So we're going to, I am making it a vote. On the 19th. Correct. How did that way the information or our answer is to them by the deadline of the 30th. Okay. Um, I think we've got five more minutes, so um, as the chair, I would like to discuss under old business office communication protocol. And going back over the minutes of the meeting, um, it was brought to my attention that in mid-March, mid Gary and Fine and Donna Bagney voted to accept the office protocol as written. Um, it then was brought up that um, member uh, McSweeney uh, was on vacation when it was brought up. So out of uh, consideration, I put it on the agenda meeting for the following meeting for it to be further discussed. Re-looking at, after our last meeting, re-looking at the points on office protocol because it had been voted and it had been approved by two, uh, the majority of the board. I've chosen not to bring up the office communication protocol for further discussion. I have signed it as well as Gary. It is now protocol until we are notified of at such a later date that the protocol will be changing. Um, Going back over it, there were six minutes or six agendas that this simple topic was on, and um, I'm putting it to bed. So the office protocol stands as written, and Sheila, if you would please um, make sure that all members of the board have a copy um, so that they can refer back to and commit it to memory. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how is the outbreak on the septic systems going, Lisa? Um, one system has had no further issues. The second system continues to be in, a, as we know, a year-long planning phase. The third system is still working actively with the planning board 
they've addressed some parking issues at the site, but I know they have some further issues to address um, before they're going to be able to move forward with their their uh, facility overhaul. We'll leave it at, at that. And so okay. they have they, all of them. One seems to be resolved, and two have a, a long road ahead of them. Right. And as we knew, as we knew right. from the outset. And we'll continue with the updates. The and private home violations important. remain um, the same. Um, most of them are resolved. Um, one of them is going to require further monitoring, but ought to be resolved shortly. Okay. One of them, um, I gave a 90-day deadline to bring their home into compliance. Um, that was done um, with also the building, plumbing, wiring, and Pembroke Police, so that all parties involved with that, that last piece of property understood that it's 90 days and, and what the, um, shall we say, the, the terms and conditions that this would be executed under, and that any variation from that would result in, in the Pembroke Police taking whatever action they deem necessary at the property. The 90 days, what was that start date? Uh, start date would have been uh, a week ago to the day. Okay. Which property is that? Alvern Road. Um, so that the parties would be clear on who is to be at the property and who is to not be at the property and the kinds of conduct that would be tolerated at the property and the kinds of conduct that would not be tolerated at the property during that time while remediating the property to a more habitable condition. Okay. And you gained access to it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Voluntarily by the homeowner. I want to be clear, the homeowner was cooperative. Okay. Uh, but there needed to be a clear understanding between all departments and all parties about what was going to occur in the time frame for it. Now everyone is clear. Okay. So there's a start and there's an end date. Correct. And obviously, you know, notwithstanding that the homeowner, should they make significant progress and explain why they couldn't finish every single point due to financial or time hardship, obviously we will re revisit that in 90 days. But in 90 days, we would expect to be, we'd expect to see significant strides. Um, and without those significant strides, we would need to reevaluate whether or not this is actually a work in progress or a, a stagnant property that would require further action from this board. Okay. You weren't given assurances, but did you? Get a sense. Oh no, I got I got assurances. Every party at the property at that time understood exactly the terms and conditions on on which using that property and, and rehabbing that property would occur under. Everyone was in complete agreement. Everyone was in complete understanding. Let me rephrase my question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The home. <coughs> you got a sense from the homeowner that their intention is to restore remain the home, property. Correct. Remain in the home. They did acknowledge that they, they do have financial limitations, and, and I agree, the kinds of things the property needs will require a fair amount of money. So, but they understood at least now the scope of the work that needed to be completed. And everyone was in agreement with the work. So, it would seem at this time as they have the, the ability to get it done. And Gary, in regards to Taylor Street, I just found this in the folder. First request from back to 2005. And then there's a note, same kind of handwritten, extra years 1999. So they have a perk test, they just keep extending. Extending. Do they have to just put something in the writing every must year? Be made in writing every year. So this is 05. You understand that a verbal request, of course, we would have nothing to present to the board, nor would it be signed by the property owner. Mm -hmm. Ergo, that would be on yeah. Sheila's or my responsibility to request that on their behalf, which would be both illegal and wildly inappropriate. Mm -hmm. That's why all these requests have to be made in writing, so that the board has assurances that it's the property owner's will that this occur. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is all. Big, so and we have several of the pro several properties that come up yearly, don't we, Lisa? I mean, actually, the rapidly <laughs> the as you would. As you would know, being in the real estate business, the amount of properties where anyone's seeking a perk extension are rapidly dwindling. Mm. Um, the vast majority of perkable property in Pembroke is either under agreement, for sale, being constructed. Um, you're not going to see a lot of... When I sat on the board, we would see 25 to 30 perk extensions a year. I think maybe there's about five parcels that stick out in my mind that you might see over the course mm -hmm. of a year. Okay. And that number continues to drop with the sale of Congress Street. Uh, 645 is here. Okay. Um, Paul Williams? I mean, you want to finish? Yeah. Yep. And well, I think we're. Um, I think you're right. Yeah, I think we are ready. It's a pretty simple request. Okay. Come on in. Um, this is straight. 
Um, Mr. Williams had approached. Mr. Williams had approached with a building permit. Um, he was hired to do a home expansion um, for the homeowner at 69 Poppenmock Street. Mr. Williams, anytime I make a mistake, hop in here. Yep. Um, roughly, the footprint of the proposed extension, uh, expansion would encroach on the septic tank setback of 10 feet that we require. But because of the layout of the home um, and the, the habitable space that was being sought by the, the homeowner, um, there wasn't really another direction to take this, this home expansion. Um, so at that point, it was pretty obvious that the expansion did need to go in the direction of the septic tank. I think Mr. Williams and I determined at that time the encroachment was going to be from the required setback of 10 feet down to 5 feet. Uh, a little bit more. It's close to 7. Oh, okay. So uh, we got some more footage out of it. That's wonderful. No, no, no. Well, no, be down to 3 feet. Though. Oh, it's down to 3 feet. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> the, the encroachment is up to 3 feet. Motors? Yes, but, um, well, they have oh, there they are. Yeah. Yeah. Come on in. Come on in. Have a seat. <laughs> Mr. Williams, so the encroachment is, is from 10 feet down to 3 feet, and um, there is not going to be a full foundation upon that, correct? That it's going to be that footing filled with crushed stone, so there will be no living three space in that area. 10, 10 down to 7? No, 10 down to 3. He just corrected me. The 3 so. actually 3.4, 3 foot 4 inches. 3.4 inches from the tank? Yeah, from the tank. Ouch. Ouch. Let me give you this here. Okay. Do I have the latest uh, design? This is the... 2000? Yeah, this is, yeah, that's the latest one I took off. This is the system was put in 1999. That's the system that's in there now. Okay. I got the ties... Um, I'm yep. sorry. From the asphalt, Lisa. I gave Lisa. you the asphalt. I got the ties from Lisa and everything else. Now, these ties reflect where the tank actually is, according to the ASBO. Okay. Now, this solid line is the existing foundation as it is right now. Okay. This dotted line is the proposed addition. Mm -hmm. And here's, like I said, the septic tank. Here's the setback, three foot four inches in here. Mm -hmm. Now. The elevations is what the big key here is. Is the elevation is? No, they show the elevations on this one here. Uh, no, but I do have one that does. Let's yeah, have the elevation. Yeah, we got the one. I think it says 98.2, and then there's 99. One of these corners here, there's 99 right here, and the foundation, 99.3. Right. So the these elevations are now over here, showing the inlet here, 97.1. Wait, not right down here. Yeah, 97.1 and stuff. What I did is I took these elevations. Now the ground elevation at the grade was 99, right here. Mm -hmm. The elevation at the tank, I'll put that on there too. 96. 96, 96. and this one should be in about 97, okay. Mm -hmm. 97, okay, coming into the tank. Mm -hmm. And the top of the foundation would sit a foot above this grade here, matching up with the existing house. The inside of the foundation is going to fill with membrane or a crushed stone, and that elevation is going to be 
That's two foot three down from the 100, which still brings us above the tank, above the top of the tank. So even if this tank and did crack or did break, the sewerage would not naturally go into that base. So this is no longer footing, this is now full foundation? It's a four foot foundation. That's cross, cross, space. cross space. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So it is, it's that's a footing. Well, it has to be for the frost No, 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 no. I, yeah. That's not, I, I just not living space. I, no, I would no. have to advise the board. There's only two the, feet, right. no, only two that's, foot yeah. three of cross no, space. You have the the okay. cross line and so we've else. got a 48 inch frost wall. Okay. The foundation. As required. Yeah, yeah, that would be required. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then crushed fill. down underneath it. Yeah, we're going to fill the inside of it afterwards. Put some crushed uh, membrane, put some crushed stone, yes. and we'll have a crawl space of two foot three. Yeah. Which is For above piping, electrical the top of the tank. You have to do mm -hmm. insulation and all that stuff. Right. Okay. Um, what is this addition? Oh, huge. It's a. Uh, oh. This, this is the existing house now without the addition. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the couple of reasons we went this way here, one, because of the conservation because of the brook on the other side. Uh, the other one was as it's more costly to make a house wider than it is to either go on the side or go up. Plus the backyard goes uphill. Mm -hmm. So in order to go out in the back, Mm -hmm. You'd have to put a retaining wall, and the cost got skyrocketing, prohibitive. So, what we're going to do now is, this kitchen was very small here. It's a very small kitchen and a small teeny bathroom in here. Where's the kitchen up here? The kitchen would be over here. Okay. So this, yeah, this is the existing. The tank is over here now. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this down, leave the foundation. So the walls come down, the roof comes off this addition here, and we go down and leave in the existing what foundation. What is this on the dam? That's a dam right now. And then there's a closet. Yeah, that mm -hmm. comes up. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. Yeah. So let me just show you the foundation. You get a better idea. You okay. already have a knee wall here. Here's the existing foundation. So what we're going to do, that's going to stay. We're going to tie into this, flush this up, and make this jog in here. This now is all going to be new about the foundation up. Mm -hmm. So this now will turn into a larger kitchen, and a family room in here, and then a bigger bathroom with the laundry here. That's a door going out with a platform. Going one out. step. One step. Okay. How many bedrooms now? How many bedrooms you got in? Two upstairs. upstairs. Two upstairs. And the one downstairs was a bedroom. At one That's point. the bedroom. At one point. Yeah. Now it's we used gone. To <laughs> okay. So it's going to stay, well, it's got a three bedroom park, so you're not adding a bedroom. No, we're subtracting one, actually. You're actually subtracting it. I'm looking at the, the plan here, the three bedroom. Design, yeah. The design floor. That's for a three bedroom. Close to that tank. Uh, Lisa, they be required to hand dig this. That's an excellent question for the contractor. The right. thing I would advise <laughs> exactly. with the homeowner yes. sitting here that that yeah. uh, they acknowledge any damage done to the tank would have to be repaired and right. that's it. You well, guys cost um, to figure out to each other. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. An excavator hitting the top corner of a tank, especially an older tank, it will it will break it. There's no yeah. doubt about yeah. it. Yeah, we're gonna use a mini excavator plus the hand digging. The first thing we're gonna do right is over this yeah. Right first right thing right we're gonna do part. is locate the tank. The next thing we have to do is we have to disconnect this line going up to the pump chamber because that's an electric line running up here. Wait, what are you disconnecting? Say that again. 
Uh, there's a line that comes from the service that goes up to this pump chamber up here. So there's a um, this pump chamber. So in other words, the tank goes into here. This then pumps it up to the leaching area up here. So we have to disconnect that. We might have to. We're gonna probably wind up putting a whole new line in there. Once we disconnect that, so we kill the power, so we won't get through it. But we're gonna hand dig the, to the tank. Find the tank. Dig down here. Hand dig this. Find the sewer line. Right. And then we be nice and careful. And yeah. <laughs> be, be extra nice and careful. Yes. <laughs> be extra Honestly, nice and careful. Honestly, the line coming out, you know, other than in pleasantness that might occur. It, the four inch line coming out is very easy to repair and replace. It's, mm -hmm. it's a four inch PVC line. Yep. It can be sleeved, it can be, a lot of things can be done to do that. The, the real potential for harm is if you break the septic tank. That's right. A, right. probably a $3,000 repair. Right. Mm -hmm. So that would not be inexpensive if it is hit or damaged. And no, you can't patch them or fix them. Right. Once, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, once their integrity is gone, um, think of it like a chipped Lego. It just really loses too much structural. You can't really kind of keep it back together. So it is a remove and replace at that point. Electrical line in the way. It's not possible. It's just that something you should be aware of. Yeah, yeah that's going to be. also have the main coming out. This, yeah, the septic line coming which out. Which is where they're going to be. So you're going to keep this underneath the wall? No, no, we'll go right through it. In other words, what we do right is we form. Okay. Yeah, what we do is in the forms, mm -hmm. we form up to each side of the mm -hmm. line, mm -hmm. and then we build, we put plywood, up, we put mm -hmm. boards in there and stuff. So it actually makes a sleeve in the wall mm -hmm. and pour the concrete. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, Not an easy dig. No, <laughs> no, no. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this. Um, on the proposal, can you come in this way, by chance? Uh, around the back. Um, oh, you got the brook there. Yeah, we the yeah unfortunately, this site is challenging because mm -hmm. between the hill and the brook, right, yeah. there aren't a lot of options. Mm -hmm. There's a fence down here uh, that runs along the property. Mm -hmm. So we'll be taking that fence down and just coming in here. Like I say, it's a mini excavator. It's one of the little small ones, not a big one. Because um, one, I don't want the weight plus the, right. it's got the smaller bucket. So, I mean, we'll do a lot of, all this stuff around the tank and stuff will be all hand dug in mm -hmm. by the septic line. Mm -hmm. You been out there, Lisa? Yes. It, I, honestly, if I thought that they had a lot of other options, but they don't, the site is too restricted. Um, again, between the hill, which would be extraordinarily cost prohibitive, never mind even if you built a retaining wall, then you, you, you're in a sand matrix in that neighborhood that is not an optimal material to build a retaining wall against as sand is not notoriously stable. And then of course you have conservation in the brook and the brook feeds into uh, Lower Mill Pond which then feeds into Furnace. It is, it is not an optimal situation as far as working on the other two sides of the house so actually the only side that is left is this side. Mm -hmm. Which is also incidentally of course why well, well, the septic system's over there. Yeah. I mean you can see the logic of the engineer. It's not that the engineer is trying to you know, stick it to them or any other homeowner. They, they didn't have any other option between, again, the hill and, and the brook. They didn't have any other place to go with the septic either. Mm -hmm. How long have you guys been in the home? Since 2003. First big addition? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm excited? Yes. Uh, we've mm -hmm. done a lot of work to the house, but not expanded. So we're hoping to get a little bit of a bigger kitchen. <laughs> We love the house, mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah, it's an old antique, what, 17? Uh, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. You, you would all know it if you drove by it. It's one that sits right at the bottom of the hill, overlooks the pond. I mean, the property has tremendous views because of its location, yet its location also leads to tremendous challenges. Oh, yeah, we're still going to go to the ZBA. Yeah, you have the ZBA, <laughs> and are you all set with the ConCom? Yeah, okay. we're all set with the ConCom. The ZBA is a, it's a matter of right, actually because we're in the back, and we're not going to be, here's the front here, so we're not going to be coaching anymore. Fun home, challenge yeah. home. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a labor of love, this house. <laughs> well, but, but any yeah. antique like that, yeah. but again, you yes, know, yeah. uh, you yes. know, everyone wants oceanfront property, right, until you have oceanfront taxes or exactly. oceanfront problems. Same yeah. thing with pondfront property. Yeah. Everyone wants it, and it's beautiful, mm -hmm. but it comes with these challenges. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, do you have any further questions? Mm -hmm. Um... 
Can I keep this copy? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I would like to make a motion um, to accept the um, plans for what number am I? Hubbamock. 69. 69 Hubbamock Street uh, as presented <coughs> by Paul Williams. Do I hear a second? <coughs> Gary seconded that. Sheila, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Take carefully. Take very you care carefully. Don't be watching me. <laughs> They'll be watching me. Yeah. Well, you also have groundwater to consider there, too. So mm -hmm. you also have groundwater to consider. Oh, yeah. Right. I would imagine, especially when the brook gets high, you must see water in that basement. Yeah, we have a sump pump. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just every now and then I see the stream in the spring when it gets really now. This winter, of course, was to your favor. It didn't, you know, didn't get as high as spring as it has. Just so you know, my brother used to own the house at the end of Hills Mill Road, all the way in there. So trust me, I would go by and I'd be like, oh, Whoa, the trees are getting high. It's better now. No, that I put two more drains in the side. I think it helped. So it's much better. Uh, that room is uh, actually. You might want to ask Sheila if she would like to copy of that. Sheila, you need a copy. Don't take whatever you got. Absolutely. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna put that all in the file if it's all right with you. Yeah, it's all right with me. Wonderful. What else do you need? Nope, that's gonna be it. That's okay. what we were looking for. Other than that, enjoy. No, no. Uh, thank you. Now you get to look through construction. Yeah, yeah. 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 As of that book, you're all set with us. Okay. Yeah, now you just got what, one more board to take care of? Yeah, one more. Two out of three ain't bad. You're all set. <laughs> well, now I'm down, guys. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, there you go. Can you keep this one? Uh, you can have it. Okay. All right, we'll keep one in the file. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gary, you must know which house that is. You drive by it. I own the house. It's the little wood shingle one that's down in the gully right next to the street. Now, you, now you're not going to be able to see it. Every time you go home, that's all you're going to yeah. see. It's small, isn't it? Yeah. 1,300 square feet is pretty small. I can see why they want to do an addition. But it is surrounded right on all sides. The, right on the corner. Yeah. 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 On the corner of the And they watch the swans. Yeah. I, I mean, if you think about it, it it's an antique house with gorgeous beauty, but then it has all the challenges. The stream literally right next to it that runs down Mill Street. Yeah. The water across the street, mm -hmm. and it just goes up in the back with the sand. Right. Okay. Wow. So, challenging site. Okay. Let's go. Oh, All right, we're moving right along. Um, uh, Sheila, do you need something? Office no. activity. Oh. <laughs> we we. We're very busy. She's moving you right along. She, she, Sheila is uh, urging Sheila. me right along. Office activity has remained extraordinarily high to the point where if either Sheila or I is missing and the other one comes back, we are very exasperated with one another. Um, it, the, the calls run the gambit. Um, trash, recycling, which of course is not really us, but we try to help people. Um, ponds, fish kills. Uh, another mm -hmm. big topic has been fish kills. I assure the public, I've gone out and looked at three alleged fish kills. They are all within normal parameters at this time of what we see in the spring after spawning. I've um, got a new report of another new one today that I'm going to go out and take a look at on High Avenue on Stetson Pond. But so far, nothing I've seen <coughs> at this time is not consistent with 21 years of involvement in the ponds of Pembroke. I've yet to see something out of the norm. The last true fish kill we had, uh, I want to say it was 05, please don't hold me to that, when, when one of the um, cranberry bogs accidentally let go. Um, of their retention pond too soon after treating the cranberries. That's the last true fish kill we saw um, in town. We've had natural fish kills, which, which don't really classify as fish kills, but when we have low oxygenated water and other things like that, um, those are all consistent with low pond levels or ponds with a, a heavy layer of ice over where there's no oxygen getting into the water, so we'll see that erupt in the spring. But right now, everything's within normal. We've started pond testing. The pond testing has all been coming back normal. Um, the real estate market, there continues to be tons of people, and, and I, I wasn't making a joke about the perk test earlier, there's not a scrap of land that is possibly buildable in this town that there aren't 20 people trying to buy at any given time. Um, you know, the, the lots on Congress Street sold, as I'm sure everyone's seen, those are starting to be developed. Taylor Street's getting ready to be developed. Copperwood is already well underway. 
Um, so there's there's a lot of development going on, and, and any perkable <coughs> land is rapidly being sold. Mm -hmm. Any house, uh, the banks are rapidly, that's the other thing that's really nice, the banks are rapidly liquidating of unoccupied properties, which is wonderful. Um, our list of vacant homes with complaints and everything else continues to drop, and it seems like almost every week we have one or two more drop off the list. How many do you have? Oh, we were, we were up to 200 properties no. in various states. I would say we're under 50. 50? Yeah, mm -hmm. which is not a lot, as, as Ms. Bagney, I'm sure, could explain. When the bank forecloses and a property goes vacant because someone's been removed, it will take several months, either even under perfect circumstances, before the bank's going to turn around and liquidate that property. So you're never at a zero status quo unless there's absolutely no foreclosures, which is almost unheard of. But we were well over 200 properties three years ago, four years ago, and those numbers are, are rapidly diminishing as those properties come on the market. And they're either flipped or liquidated or torn down, depending on the state of uh, condition they're in. Let's talk about manure and Priscilla continues Drive. To continue. On my last drive by on Friday, the, the pile is almost indiscernible from the street. It is, it's gone from being what was a, a pile that one could see to, to, and I shouldn't say from the street, from the top of their driveway, mm -hmm. to significantly feet lower. Um, it is almost indiscernible from the regular horizon of the backyard. Top of the homeowner's driveway or the Correct. top of no, the? No, top of the homeowner's driveway. It is almost indiscernible. Did you go? You didn't go. I walked here? onto their property, yes, but I didn't want to disturb the horses, as it didn't appear like anyone was home, and they were out in the corral. I didn't want to get them worked up. Right. But it is. It is almost where where you could see it as a hill before. It is now almost dis, dis, you know indiscernible from the, the elevation of the yard. I'm not expecting you to be a phenomenal estimator, but I'm going to ask you if anyway. I, from my original visit, I'd say the pile is almost half gone at this point, maybe more. Okay. You know. Yeah. I haven't dealt with the homeowner. <coughs> I haven't dealt with the, the person who has raised the issue mm -hmm. as much as you have or this office. Mm -hmm. But I get a sense that... Um, I would like to see they're seeing a marked improvement. I would hope that they're seeing a marked improvement in their own property. I can see a marked improvement, so I hope it's improving everyone's quality of life. That would be the goal here. Well, I know, Lee, um, Sheila, you drafted up two letters. Yeah, they went out, uh, I think they went out Friday. Okay. Uh, so you send her the update? Yeah, I sent one to um, two to Plymouth Street. Uh, well, actually, uh, two two residents on three um, Plymouth Street. Two two separate issues, but the same. What's their What's the second issue? Well, the second was um, the house next door with the contractor. Yeah. And uh, she asked for an update. The board was out there. I pointed out next to the driveway the the materials that were were. Up I didn't know that was still that she. I think she just was still it was still whether questionable it was whether it was. It, it's back in code. There's no. It's in, so it, it's in back code. in compliance of code. They, they there was still like material they were, back yeah. there, but none of it would be considered of a trash or disposable nature. It it would be considered construction materials, which he is allowed to keep using right. materials on his property to do further home improvements either at his house or another house. He right. has a contract. Because I thought when we saw it that it, it was in compliance. It was. That the board saw it, it was okay. in compliance. So we don't need to respond to that one anymore because we have sent Right. I told her that it, it, was, in, it, was, that it, it was in compliance. It's in, in, compliance. compliance. In, in, in our And I sent it to the, for the person that owned the home Perfect. to say that he's we so could. if there's any any other issue, should, it will have to be, the homeowner will have to bring that back up. Right. Okay. And then, um, and also a letter to the Millers and okay, and, uh, and the complainant yeah. about the progress on the work right. and okay. and that we would continue to monitor it. And Lisa, I, I think <coughs> the office has done a good job. I'm talking about you, the board, our administrator, and maybe mediating is the wrong term to use. But I, I'd like you to certainly not put pressure on the millers, but I'd like you to stay on top of it. Oh, absolutely. They, I, they I, absolutely. I don't want to hear... Me by their property. I just sense that the, the person issuing the complaint... Just stay on top of it no, so that... absolutely. They've seen me and I've had further conversations with the millers. Absolutely the case. They, they are they are yeah. aware I've come by the property. Yeah. And they knew I would be. Right. Yeah. There's been no issue with that. And they also gave each one of us... Um, I did not... 
get out there last week, but I will put it on my calendar to do this week for. And if you want, if you want to pop to down together, fine. Yeah, if, you if not, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I I I would just take a quick visual anyway. I think we had enough pictures to sustain what we saw that day to what this day shows. So, um, okay, we still have about four more minutes. So, DPW poop poop bags. I know I have not gotten an answer to whether or not those are going to be refilled, replenished, or anything else. Yeah, I'm assuming, are you referring specifically at Tubbs Meadow or, or in all locations? or Wherever um, years ago they were, and the, and they were... I've heard no, no, no mention that that intends to be replenished. Done. Okay. So... Um, whether or not we want to request that or, or anything else, I can't answer you. Okay. I'm not entirely sure that the conservation didn't initially buy the, the, the poop depots to begin with. Mm -hmm. Is that something this board would like to push forward or see remedied? Well, I would hope that... Well, we would like to think dog owners would pick up after some. The reality is that's not what's happening. I know, I know. And, and I the reality is if you walk Tubbs Meadow, even the people that bring dog bags have a tendency to put the poop in the bag and then leave it out in Tubbs Meadow, which is equally disturbing. Right, because there's no barrel in which to put it in. But the, the question is, the question is you. who can order that there be barrels and who can order that there be bags and who can fund those two activities? So if the board would like me to take that to anyone, I would say that the next place to take that is the town administrator. <coughs> because you're you're talking about multiple multiple issues mm. there. Right. I, I I myself I think it's a it's a huge it would require a huge paradigm shift mm -hmm. on behalf of the fifty percent of the Pembroke families that own dogs. I I think we as citizens have come a long way, and people who own dogs, mm -hmm. when they're walking their pet out on the street and a dog poops on someone else's lawn, they'll pick it up. But you know, I go in Tubbs Meadow all the time. I carry my bags and I pick yeah. up after my dog. Yeah. But I think when a dog poops in the woods, or they just people just leave it there. Yeah. But then, the reality is there's also a lot of people, and, and one can simply read social media to ascertain this, that think it's perfectly okay to have their dog off leash on Tubbs Meadow as well, mm -hmm. which of course is illegal. Never mind a town bylaw. That is a state law. Your dog must be restrained and under control at all times. Massachusetts general law. There's still people that think it's okay to have their dogs loose out there. I will not walk Tubbs Meadow anymore because I have a rescue. And three times he's been charged by other dogs that the dog owner from 50 feet away is yelling to me, oh, he's friendly, and I want to yell, but mine's a rescue and will bite if he feels threatened, and, and my dogs are on leashes. And, and that, that creates an issue, you know? Um, so to, to Mr. Fine's point of, we still don't have people following the law, much less picking up after their dogs. So the question is, do we go and, and seek a higher level of enforcement? Do we start instituting fines and everything else? I mean, the statute is already in place to start doing this. The authority has already been granted to the, to the health agent by town meeting to fine for activities like this. Do we want to do this? And then the second question is, how do we fund all of it? How do we fund the, the barrels, the bags, picking it up, and how do we fund the man hours to be out there and actually writing tickets for people not following that? So the barrels do not exist at all? At all. No, they are out at some of the parks, but not all of them. They're not as many as there used to be. They are at all the beaches, however. Mm -hmm. There's a dumpster at Tubbs Meadow. There is one at the main parking lot of Tubbs Meadow. At the, at the smaller lot off of Mill Street, there was a barrel and there is no longer. All right, why don't we bring this up? <coughs> I can do further research and I will have yeah, formal see, discussions and see what more we can find. If out. you would, because, you know, I know I'm just thinking of the amount of money that it's going to cost. Yep. And I'm actually thinking about finding people and having them tell you, prove it, that's my dogs. Um, all accurate. Is it better if there aren't barrels at these places and that we're hoping that people will pick it up and I, I think it, yeah, um, I mean, I think most people are compliant in regards to that fact. Um, there are some people who aren't, but, you know, now we're policing, um, 
these bags, and in order to, if you are to per se police it, then you have to have all the means available, and that's going to all cost money. So, all right, you just take a peek and, and see what I, you I will got do some informal research to see. Okay. And, and try to get some estimates on what it would take to get it done, so to speak. Okay. All right. Uh, Seven fifteen is here. Um, this is Mr. Dan Pelletier of West Elm Street. Um, Do you want to go with the firm? In, yeah, come on up in the hot seat. Fluoride in our water. You had passed out. Um, it got to me via um, Mr. Federico. Really, my wife through. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one evening while I was here in town hall and we wanted to um, you know I think we all read the article um, I wasn't quite sure you know it wasn't really giving me any hardcore so we thought you know what let's see what you got to say and um, your information or worries about how it relates to um, anything including under active thyroid so what you got? Yeah, so, I mean, if you look at the internet, obviously, there's propaganda on both sides of it. Mm -hmm. um, regarding fluoride specifically, if I have a headache, I don't call the DPW and ask them to put Tylenol in the water. Why would I, you know, a lot of the arguments for fluoride, like, oh, the uh, tooth decay has gone down significantly since it was implemented in the 60s. Um, a lot of things like toothpaste now have fluoride. I know we did, when I was in elementary school, we did the fluoride little mouth guard things. People have more access to modern dentistry than we did 50, 60 years ago. Um, is kind of, is, is one side of it. I mean, I, I like the Pembroke tap water. I've been drinking it for 30 years. Um, but the surrounding communities, I know Hanover doesn't, I know Hanson doesn't, I know Duxbury doesn't, I know Norwell Duxbury doesn't. Duxbury does, Do unfortunately. It's been to town meeting three times to remove the fluoride and soundly defeated every time in Duxbury. They just looked at their CCR. I thought, and they, I thought the motion, I thought I read that the motion passed <coughs> by a very slim margin. Oh, the last time. The other two times it was pretty, pretty They well have defeated. reduced the amount they're yeah. putting in there though. Uh, yeah. I looked at the CCR and I didn't see fluoride, and it's supposed to be on there if they're putting it in the water. That but came from the Duxbury Health Agent, so I'd like to believe that's accurate. Okay. Okay. So, to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, again, it's not so much me. My wife kind of brought it to my attention. She developed a thyroid issue after she moved here. Where'd she come from? Um, Merrimack. Merrimack, Merrimack. yeah. Okay. I don't even, I, don't, I haven't looked at the water in Merrimack, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, and we're Board of Health here, you know, from the DPW perspective, I mean, 65 gallons a day per person in, in is what, you know, the average is 65 gallons per day per capita. I know I may drink maybe 24 ounces if I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. Seems like a lot of wasted money and resources fluoride, fluoridating the water. Um, what is the cost? I, don't know. I know they're looking into that right now. I'm sorry, should I, I asked Jean. It's twenty four thousand a year. A year. So, for Pembroke. For Pembroke, that's what our DPW spends. All right. Okay. So. Okay, yeah. so so your wife, um, once coming here, started developing headaches, coming from Merrimack, Merrimack, well, New Hampshire. Yeah, the symptoms kind of went as such. She said, okay. you know, she, she's been living here now for five or six years, and mm -hmm. this kind of just was to figure it out three years ago. Um, you know, and I can't say that for sure it was the floor in the water. We also have had two children now. It's a little big hormonal swing when that sort of stuff happens. Mm -hmm. But um, she started after moving here, you know, I, I'm tired. I feel like crap. I'm, you know, exhausted. She just felt run down, and I said, well, you feel run down. You're not supposed to feel run down. Go to the doctor and see what's see what's wrong. So mm -hmm. they did blood work and they determined that she had thyroid. Uh, I don't know if it's hyper or hypo thyroid. And the doctor felt this was linked to fluoride. No, no, that was that's just. What did the doctor feel as the source? They just said that you have poor thyroid. With no explanation no. or theory. Benefit. No, just that her thyroid levels are. I think it's low. Low, yeah. So. 
She's under control. Yeah, she's on. Yeah, she's on medication. Med medicine for the thyroid stuff. You know, and just to be transparent, this is my I, I'm the water superintendent for the town of Harwich. This is what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we don't superintendent of water. Oh, thank you. Um, sorry, we don't fluoridate in Harwich. Um, you know, we get yelled at for touching the water with a little chlorine. So, mm -hmm. sure. Well, I know that um, fluoride. We went back to 1964. Yeah. Which kind of puts me as a four-year-old. Um, back then, it was scary, scary, very scary. Um, you know, fluoride. I remember as a child, um, the fluoride, fluoride uh, toothpaste, the toothbrushing program came into effect when I was in elementary school. It was not within this town, but. It was in another town. Mm -hmm. um, they were getting kids into brushing their teeth. They were fluoride was being added to water. Uh, fluoride pills. I know that dentists. I just found out from a, a a very active dentist here in Pembroke that they haven't been giving out fluoride pills for years to kids, and they've noticed a great increase in cavities where we had this group. Um, of, of age group that didn't get cavities. You know, I mean, uh, I don't think my daughter who's 29 ever had a cavity. I or agree. my son, <laughs> you know. Um, but you were eating hard candy. No. Um, but, you know, so there's, there's pros and cons on both sides. Right. So what we wanted to do, one of the things that we had talked about was is that we wanted to kind of get pro and con, figure out, you know, right. where you're going to, and we now have stated that the town of Pembroke is spending $24,000 a year to put fluoride in our water. They've been doing it since 1964. Can I now ask the obvious, why isn't this part of the Department of Public Works? 1969. I don't. I, no, I'm just curious. It, 1969. It, 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 doesn't it, it, was in the so time. So what happened was I, I brought it up to. No, it, it, I just I'm just curious. No, it it, it I brought it up to uh, the Department of Public Works board, and in Pembroke. Yes, in Pembroke, in s trying to seek further information as to sure. how fluoride came about in the town, it was redirected to the Board of Health that. It was, it was a health in, initiative in the 60s. Right. It was very common. Yeah, it was an article that was presented on town floor. Article so that's your answer. The only way to remove it then would be town meeting floor. If it was put in place yes. and voted by town meeting, the only place to remove it is at town meeting. Let me just double check. It was right. No, I, I'm not. Article 22. It was 69. Shoot, I was on. Yeah, Article 22 that was presented. Um, I don't have that. Um, gee, Sheila, I didn't run a lot of my stuff this week. That's oh. all right. Yeah, well, um, later. I wasn't alive then, so I think I just asked. Yeah, I saw that. It was actually last week. It was a, you did email it yes, to no, me. Yes, she and, did and find it. I know she did. I know that it was an article put forth, forth on the town. There you go, Mr. Fine. You're all over it. 1969. Um, <coughs> article 22. See if the town will raise and appropriate the sum of money to be expended under the direction of the water department for the purpose of buying and installing equipment to meter to meter fluoride into the town's water supply and provide for such treatment or take any action therefore. The article was submitted by the Board of Health on behalf of the DPW. That was just the, okay, so that makes sense. That was a sponsorship. But either way, yeah. so there's your answer. In and order to remove it, it would have to go to town meeting floor and be voted you, for. And that was okay. part of the question yeah, from the sure. DPW too was because you know I don't have to go if I want to change what I adjust my pH with right. in Harwich to the the board. I mean the town meeting asking to change the chemical. But that's exact, that's right. how it got added. That's why mm -hmm. to change to change any about town meeting bylaw. I'm sure everyone in this room knows okay. it because it was done at town meeting, and we don't know why we can't time warp back to the logic of why it was done on town meeting floor. I would assume because of the funding mechanism and, and because it wasn't in the budget naturally. I, I but I'm I'm making supposition about what occurred in 69 which I couldn't answer mm -hmm. intelligently so that in order to, to cease that activity that was raised appropriate and put in place that's why you'd have to go back and do that. Mm -hmm. 
go back to the board. Which I'm assuming now is that must board. be why it always it's happens in Duxbury yeah. like that. It's, yeah, that could. Well, no, I mean, Duxbury wouldn't keep putting this article on and off and on and off just for the heck of it because right. they have nothing right. better to do at town meeting on a Saturday. So I would assume that theirs was done the same way, hence why. And I'm sure if you ran it by town council, that's what they'd say. You don't undo something, you do right. a town meeting by a vote of a board. Or at least I wouldn't ever set that legal precedence. And I think a lot of people are, are, are drinking bottled water now. I, I, think they're, they're I don't think a lot of people drink, I, I'm, I'm going to be blunt and honest, I don't think a lot of people drink tap water. And I if they do, it. it's filtered through their refrigeration system, right. Right. through a filtered, a, a brittle pitcher, whether mm -hmm. it's a brittle pitcher in their fridge or a filtration system on their refrigerator anyway. Which mm -hmm. is another, <laughs> uh, you know, the probably only dose of fluoride people are getting is from their ice. If or their that, toothpaste. You know, yeah, or their toothpaste, or their toothpaste. you know. I mean, and that's, and look, if fluoride's serving a purpose and it's helping, you know, it, it's tough to say because the the evidence goes on both sides. They say, well, the fluoride dosage that you put in is fine for adults but not for infants, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, you know, an argument against, it, it goes, it goes either way. I mean, I've had cavities growing up. I mean, it could just be poor genetics. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to it's hard to say. Yes, I mean, there are certain instances where yeah, they can say we started adding fluoride and the tooth decay went down in this community. Right. Um, they a lot of things that I read specifically target low income um, when they're referencing those big, you know tooth decay drops low income areas mm -hmm. where they didn't have access to fluoride programs, dentistry, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so is the medicine is the medicine that your wife is on is is she doing well? Yeah, I mean it's it's up and down because we just had another kid, so mm -hmm. as hormones change, levels change, so mm -hmm. they're working on finding the right dose if she goes back every few months and they take blood work and check me. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I think that I tend to agree that if it it has to, it can't we cannot change it. Mm -hmm. I think the board would set a dangerous precedence to remove something that was put in place by a town meeting. Right. So I mean could kind be of think challenged if, if someone wanted to. And I'm not saying that there's any big fluoride proponent out there that's gonna come charging in and saying you deploy my fluoride illegally. I don't know. Maybe there is a big pro yeah, fluoride group. I yeah. don't know. But I think th that it's not the, where you stand on the issue that's the concern to me. The, cons the concern to me is how did it get there and that you remove it by the same mechanism. Otherwise, yeah, the, the, the appearance right. of the board acting independently and against town meetings will is not something I, I could advise in good faith to this board or the DPW for that matter. Right. We, we can certainly, <coughs> as a board, Weigh in on the issue, and, and oh, of course. Yeah, and in terms of weighing in on the issue, Lisa, you, you made reference to the filter filtration system through the refrigerator. Yeah. People are drinking bottled water, and I wouldn't go so uh, far as saying that doesn't. Um, I because I asked about that, yeah. and that doesn't take out the fluoride. I, I it has to be a same. really, really microns, you know, small yeah. microns, to get the fluoride out. I I think the younger population. What you said is true. They are they are drinking bottled water, but I, you know, there's twenty thousand people who live in Pembroke, and I'm sure there are plenty of people that still drink tap water. Yeah, I'm sure there's, still I'm sure there's people, people that don't even know there's fluoride in the water. Yeah, it, 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 I, would exactly. say, I would say that's a strong possibility. No. We, say we received an email. From but heaven help if the water's brown. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure yeah. everyone's seen yeah. that. Yes, yeah, they have. <laughs> <laughs> we got an email from Sheila. On last mm -hmm. last Friday, yeah. about Doctor Alukian. Yes, yes. And although she, through her assistant, she maybe didn't want to come in here. I certainly couldn't support this going to town meeting for, and myself taking a stance without. I mean, she seems to be an expert. I would love her. That, that's she, a, would, that's, thing. she would actually. Do, Dr. Lukian has appeared, but usually only at town meetings as Dr. Lukian's time is, is at an extreme premium. Um, Dr. Lukian has spoken at all of the Duxbury town meetings, which is how I even became aware. Mm -hmm. so. Well, she's spoken. Is she? He? I believe it's a he. he? It's a I believe it's a he. Well, he, he has spoken at, according to what I'm hearing, three Duxbury town Correct. meetings. I would say if, if he would want or if anyone would want 
the Board of Health to even put that as an article on Town Meeting 4. I would want to have him come in here. I, I think he'd be opposed to it. He went to Duxbury to defeat. He'll only, he will to, only come once. Yeah. He'll come to he, talk he, to us, or if it's going to go on town floor. That was the, the exact question we were asked. Floor. Oh, wait, he went to Duxbury three times. For town meeting, each time. For town meeting. It's come up on Duxbury town meeting three times oh. to, to yeah, stop article. fluoridating okay. the water. So I'm, I'm suggesting he, potentially twice the Board of Health. I don't, think, I don't think that's an option. You can probably get someone else to come, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, I mean, my my, you know, I'm I'm not even, you know, I, I I don't understand why it was directed to the DPW. The Board of Health directed the DPW to do this. I don't think that anyone Does directed. Does the Board of Health have I, I, to? I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you right there. I don't think anyone directed anything. It was a town meeting article, article that it wasn't supported. It was sponsored. There's a difference. Okay. What for is example, difference? for example, this board and other boards have put forth articles in the past. It doesn't mean, hey, do this article. It means consider this article. I'll give you a for example. The board of health put forth in the past to give the, the authority to the health agent to be able to write tickets um, for for illegally disposing of trash. Okay, basically to be a trash monitor and, and fine people. It wasn't that the board at that time necessarily wanted the health agent to have that. It was in response to complaints of people saying things were happening and not enough was being done. So a quote was put out there and it passed. I don't, I don't think when a, when a board sponsors an article to go to town meeting floor, it necessarily says that, oh, we absolutely need this or it's the best. Now, if the board stands up and speaks to it and says, oh, yes, we need this, Mm -hmm. Whether it be a purchase, for example, DPW purchasing equipment, but we've seen other uh, other articles on town meeting floor that are even withdrawn by the proponent for funding reasons and other reasons, mm -hmm. for for further data or whatever else. So I don't think that that because that appeared there that necessarily the board of health or anyone else was pumping the article or saying right. do this, do this. I think the op uh, it was giving the opportunity to the to the voters of the town of Pembroke to say I want this or I don't want this. Mm -hmm. I think from a health standpoint. In the 60s, there was probably a, a large drive of fluoridate your water. I mean, yeah, that's back push. when we were doing the four food Don't groups and doing yeah. all that other kind of stuff. Um, and, and it was a big thing back then. The, the vaccination thing was big back then, because you know, that wasn't commonplace. Now, dental care and vaccinations are commonplace. Now you have a big anti-vax group. Now, even if that came up to not require vaccinations at our school, I, I could see where that could come up as, as an article at town meeting floor. And I don't think that would mean that the Board of Health or the school committee or anyone else is saying, oh, no, don't vaccinate your kids. It, it comes up as a, a, a social topic. Mm -hmm. I think fluoridation came up as a social topic. Right. It came up as a, it was the, the, the thing of the day. Mm -hmm. For example, ticks is the thing of the day this year. Mosquito spraying in Plymouth County Mosquito Control and the vote to join Plymouth County Mosquito Troll and have the spraying the air to, to get rid of the mosquitoes. Now you have just as strong a faction against it saying, no, no, stop spraying me with chemicals. Don't you have people with the signs in the yard, don't spray my yard and everything mm -hmm. else. So I think things come up cyclically. I think things come up as a social topic, not just this and that. You know, if the Board of Health wants to take a stand on this topic or not, that's appropriate for each board member to research. But again, it's the topic of the day rather than, you know, I think the will of the people. There's, with all due respect, you're the first person to bring it up in, oh, yeah. you know, 55 years. But I think, I think that it is important, I think it's also necessary that the people of Pembroke decide whether and the water department does mail out that brochure that no one looks at, everyone throws right. in their trash that comes out in the water bill. As he said, it's required by law. Right. Everything in the water has to be posted, has to be notified. No one looks at it. So right. So the idea that no one knows about it is they on them. On Correct. That's what people do. God, you gotta love that social media. Yeah. Does this happen down um, in Harwich? Yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so there you go. I'm I'm a Facebook responder okay. as well as part of my life. Well, yeah. Yeah. Put yeah. Out the fire yeah. Floor without, you know, without her coming here without him coming here. You know, I, I think your that everything just, you just said was informative, but it, it felt anecdotal to me. In in my involvement with Town Hall, which excuse me, in, in the town of Pembroke, sure. which has been less than yours, I think the articles that have come before town meeting have been sponsored by I, I can't think of many articles that were sponsored just to put it out there and let the people decide about the 
the little pull you issuing tickets. That felt like the your example didn't wash with me. It felt as though that's what the board wanted you to do. No, uh, I, I was the person that put it on, and no, I didn't okay. want it. I, I don't think it, it, it's a good thing to have your health agent running around writing out tickets for people. I don't think fining people is the correct way to gain compliance. I don't think adding financial burdens on top of what is already a burden for whatever has occurred is a good thing. I think maybe in the rare case you have an extreme individual you know, situation, but there's other ways to do it in the form of tax lien and other things. But people wanted more. People wanted authority. So I'm just giving a for example. I was not in favor of it, but nonetheless. Well, the only thing, in, in, in order to undo it, it has to be undone at town floor. So the question is, does the board want to put forth an article to remove it? Gary does not want to put forth an article on town floor without speaking to Dr. Well, Flora. Based upon well, feel free what, to give him a call. Based upon what we've discussed we last at our last meeting and tonight, I wouldn't want to sponsor an article and put it on town meeting floor. Why let all the let all the professionals, so, so all the let, pros and let cons, one, let one person come forward. let one person who's against it speak to a room of 200 people and have them make a snap decision on a, on a, on a vote of hands. That, that's, to me, that's not, this is this is a big issue. I'm not, you know, I, I think, no offense, either re I think mm -hmm. removing it or letting it stay should be done with great care and consideration. I certainly don't know enough about it, but I, I wouldn't want to see it go to town meeting for, at, I wouldn't want to sponsor it as a member of the Board of Health at this juncture without more information. Mm -hmm. That's all. And I don't, I can't speak to the specific health benefits, pros or cons. I mean, I can tell you as a water supplier, you know, to me, it just seems like a waste of money because we're, we're pumping millions of gallons of water and it's not getting drank. So yeah. that to me just yeah. seems, that mechanical reason alone seems like a waste of money. 24 grand a year, that could have been our extrication equipment for the fire yeah. department yeah. this year. No question. You know, that, mm -hmm. that's, and then you have the mechanical equipment that, the mechanical equipment that needs to be maintained, mm -hmm. replaced, and so on. Um, you know, firemen, police, you have, you know, and we and we have no, know, we have no money. That you know, and the strictly fluoride that does not reason, benefit us right. as adults. Fluoride is strictly a benefit, I believe. And please correct me if I'm wrong. If, if we're not the whole medical, push is for children. It's for the it's children. For the children. Right. It's for the children. So, and if the problem too is, are we? We're adding fluoride to the water, and we're taking fluoridated toothpaste, fluoridated mouthwash. Are we overdosing ourselves too? And that's mm -hmm. one of the the other cons to it, you know. And I'm sure a doctor, uh, you know, could speak more eloquently about what the health benefits are. Right. But and I find that when there is a topic, a hot topic like this, that there are definitely the pros and the cons, and the parents and the elderly and people who have an opinion in regards to one way or another that they're able to stand up and state their purpose and, and their opinion. Um, but with that being said, why don't we try this? Let's see if Dr. Fluoride would like to come in and talk to the board. We're not ready at this point in time to go to town meeting. Well, I didn't want to speak for the. I was speaking for myself. I didn't want to speak for the board. You may. You may feel differently. I. I do feel differently. Okay. So therefore, we have no vote. We have no vote. But I'd rather see something be done in some fashion to be able to get to a point where I think it's ultimately going to end up on town meeting floor. Annual town meeting or the fall special it would be the annual, right? The the one in May. They're both annual. They both have a special. Either mm -hmm. one would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. well, it's a policy. All right. All right. Usually you do capital purchase in the fall, regular budget in the spring, but, yeah. a, but a policy, policy. would, be, would be appropriate either. I mean, I, I drink the tap water. Contrary. I mean, I, 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 I drink the tap do. water too. I mean, and I have a Britter, um, you know, that I know doesn't filter out the fluoride, but, you know, I'm long past those days of cavities. You know, now they're just crowns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I drink what comes through the fridge and I have zero cavities, but I didn't grow up in Pembroke, so. Right. I've been drinking it for, like I said, 30, almost 31 years. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Hey, I grew up on Boston water. <laughs> Ah. They explain so much. Doesn't Lucky it? to be here then. I guess. Yeah, I might glow in the dark. <laughs> so, you know, we've got your input as a <coughs> owner, as a water person with the knowledge. We know where it came from, when it started. We know the costs. Now we want to look forward and see if which way we want to go with this in regards to. Heartbroken either way. You know. No, but I mean, we understand the point you're raising. Yeah, I do understand. And it could be that. one of those things. It's time for that topical discussion. Right. You know, and maybe it, it, it is time that maybe fluoride is discussed, and and that allotment of money there is may because there is a newer um, threat in town. You know what I mean? That it can be used for. Um, so with that being said, thank you for coming in, and um, we will try and see what Mr. Um, Fluoride thinks. Um, I would like to hear too. I mean, well, yeah. we would be more than happy to have you come back, and we'll, and we'll definitely be on the website when we have it. it. Yeah, but I know yeah. he's been all over the state talking about this topic. So pro pro fluoride. Yeah, yeah. he's very pro fluoride, and I don't know why. I just mm -hmm. know that he is. I just mm -hmm. know that it's come up in Duxbury uh, quite a few times. And I made a phone call to uh, two uh, dentists and asked the question. No, this is the home. No, I know that now. Yeah. Was your um, dentist pro fluoride? My dentist was very pro fluoride. My dentist, yes. the dentist that I spoke to, said, I, I said, taking the fluoride out of the water and via, via, via Yeah, I got very visceral reaction. Via I, God, no, because yes. it's the only. I was advised, it was their professional opinion, it was the only vehicle left to be able to get any type of fluoride in. And you'll have medical doctors who will, you know, be pros and cons about how much fluoride we should be taking, you know, especially little kids, you know, they yeah. swallow the toothpaste, that's why the little kids' toothpaste doesn't have fluoride in it, um, you know, but it's just, right. they were, Everyone that I actually approached the question to as a dentist said, oh, God, no. Please leave it. Please um, leave it in. Please yes. leave it in. Dan, I, I, I want to echo what Donna said in terms of thanking you come in, but, you know, it, it's great that a citizen took an issue that, and, and you know, you're, you deal with it every with day, but I, I think it's wonderful expertise. that you came in here and, and spoke before the board and, and I wish more people did that so I, I applaud you for, for it every coming, day <laughs> yeah coming forward so yeah and like I said you know either way it goes I grew up with fluoride I was proud to say I had fluoride in the water whether it did anything or not I, mm -hmm. is to be determined I guess so we'll, are we going to have um, we can, we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna ask. Ask. we're going to ask we're going to ask okay we're going to ask but we'll put it on our agenda to continue discussing. Yeah. I see the I see the meetings on. It's on it's it's on yeah. there. It's on there. We're not hard to find. It's my it's my you know my entertainment watching the uh, town. And now that you're a dog oh. owner, you can weigh in about the poop eggs. <laughs> oh, it drives me up a wall when I'm walking through you know Lodham's Ford and mm -hmm. there's a poop Doesn't egg sitting on the side of the trail. I, it makes me insanely like, crazy. If you're gonna just. Don't pick it Don't up and put it, it in the Just leave it. No go. I if can't believe gonna... anyone. I mean, I'm a dog owner. It order. blew who, my mind. Who would pick it. up, put it in the bag, and, and then leave it? it. I, that's absurd. Of course it is. I don't well, know if they, they think they're someone must back. have been looking. At, so they picked it up, and, and then, then they, they just flung it, it or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. Or they thought maybe I'll get it on the way back out, and they forget. I don't know. But it blows my mind. No, I don't think they Yeah, I wouldn't give them that. I they were all telling me. Way too bad. I've done it. I wanted to be walking with it. <laughs> but I was running. And I guess with me? Yeah. So I picked it up, put it in the bag. But then when I got back to my truck, I drove back to where I left it, and I did That's pick right. it up. Cause... Oh, you're such a good doobie. Yeah, well, it was somebody's neighborhood. <laughs> such a good doobie. Yeah, well, that, that only lasted a month or two of running. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go, yes, go. All right, Dan, thank you. No problem. Thanks, Dan. Have a good night. You Have too. Have fun down in Harwich. Talk with yeah. you later. It's a nice Thanks commute. Thanks for coming in. Yep. How's that At least commute? you're going the wrong way of the traffic. That's yeah. all. That makes all the difference. It's the same thing every day, so no yeah. complaints. Take it easy. Good. Thanks. You know him? He lives on West Elm Street. Mm -hmm. You know him, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
Um, okay, local regulations. Let's yes. bop through the last few of these. There, so All she right, and she I mean, were reading through the local regs, and this is what came up: that that the within ten feet, the the no footings. It, a lot of the builders seem to be confused, and I don't know because I understand it says you can't have a structure, you can't have this and that within ten feet of any septic component, but it would be the contention of a lot of builders. And you, if you remember when Kevin Sealand and his son came in, and they said, "But it's just the deck footings." Mm -hmm. So do we want to clarify by adding the words when, where, it, where it already states in our regulations, within 10 feet of any septic component, we to add the words, you know, no structural element, including footings or supports, so that it is more clear to everyone that this includes decks, this includes knee walls, this includes... I think they, there needs to be more clarity. So, you know, if the board wanted to vote, you know, to include the words footings and or supports and have that language added into our regulations that might clarify uh, for people um, to think about that. So it would be footings as well as supports? Yes. The word supports would cover anything that wouldn't be a footing. You know, if someone wants to say, well, it's not a footing, it's just a support block or something, we want to be clear that we mean anything. The only thing that or the footing, something that the any, sip of any type of support. Right. The, the, the intention when it was written is to have nothing constructed within 10 feet of the septic system. For the obvious reason of if you dig within 10 feet of a septic system, you run the risk of injuring the tank, breaking mm -hmm. the pipe, disturbing the septic field, and, and none of that should occur. The only thing that belongs over a septic tank or on or near a septic field is grass, certainly not trees or, or large growing items. But the other thing that we found that is not a problem at all, obviously, is a paver patio. A paver patio is actually a perfect over septic use. Um, and we see that a lot now in walkways and stuff um, in some of the nicer neighborhoods. Some very creative um, stonemasons, for lack of a better mm -hmm. word, lay out these beautiful walkways and such in these front yards and then use these beautiful round cement um, stylized Medallion. covers. Mm -hmm. They're like medallions or compass roses or yeah. beautiful mm -hmm. suns. And they use that to cover where the okay. access to the septic tank would be. So when you have your system pumped, you take off this beautiful medallion or whatever mm -hmm. else. Your septic can be pumped and it's dropped right back in place. No, no torn up grass, no mud, no, oh, geez, I got to run down and get a, an as-built. Where's my septic? I got to go find it. It's right there. Mm -hmm. And it, it's actually ingenious. Um, but paver patios or if, it, if the septic was in the backyard, backyard patios with paving stones and things like that would be appropriate because they allow water and air to pass through them, you know, in between all the stones and they, they would not um, do any injury or harm, you know, to a septic system or a septic tank. Mm -hmm. But obviously a deck footing, you know, installed too close to any of those items could do damage. Or worse still, if the deck were to come down, it could do damage. No brainer. I mean, I, I yeah. think we can make um, and, and the one thing I just want to bring up about the no variances on new construction, they, they've got a lot of land. They, they design it the way that it's supposed to be, and Correct. there shouldn't be the, any The issue we just saw is obviously on our antique on home. Correct. Very unique situation. Right. On new construction, these, these things should not be an issue. Right. So, to me, um, would you like to make a motion? Sure. Let's see if I can get this okay. worded properly. <laughs> make a motion to change the uh, to change the language that we currently have to include footings and supports also must be within 10 feet not of, within 10 not feet. within 10 feet of a septic component for new construction perfect what was that footings and structure? footings and supports Because it already yeah, defines, you know, support. homes, structures, cellars. Mm -hmm. Now we're just adding two more definitions of things that should not be there. Mm -hmm. I hear a second. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Say that louder. Do I hear a second, Madam Chair? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wonderful. Yay, we got another item off our list. Yep. Okay. <coughs> animal fees. Should we raise the animal fees? I think the board's going to want to consider that, but one of the biggest areas of confusion is the one to nine chickens. Yeah. We, we didn't charge a fee for that, and we did that quite intentionally because people would just get a chick or something with a class school project 
and, and whatever. I'm not seeing that anymore. Uh, I'm hoping because the schools discontinued it because it's a bad idea to send people home with chickens that don't know how to care for them. Um, but we're having quite a bit of abuse. Someone comes in and says, oh yeah, I only have six chickens. I go out there and there's 24 and of course they've paid no fee. Mm -hmm. So people are seeing that as a way to avoid paying any kind of fee at all. And then the next question is, is a maximum fee of $25 a year enough? Um, we put that in place because when we first started doing the animal licensure, there was a lot of pushbacks. So we were trying to keep it very affordable and low. I don't know if maxing out at 25 is necessarily a bad idea. That certainly, you know, it doesn't come close to covering our expenses, of course, as far as animal inspection and everything else, but it does help defray them. Uh, but I think the biggest problem is the, the quote-unquote freebie seems to be mm. either intentionally misunderstood or abused. Yeah. Oh, they'll, you know, they have a 9 or 3 and they have both. 20 and they take the 10. Yeah. Um, and nope. I think also now with the fact that we're right to farm, I think we're going to have more people. I think it's a distinct possibility, especially have chickens. llamas and chickens. And, and I saw something on social media, and Miss Landy was kind enough to answer back about our chicken. Well, the biggest and thing then is there's a noise, but you know, the noise ordinance. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing that the, the, the roosters are always going to be an issue, right? And that's clearly covered in our regulations, and people should understand. Right to farm is a wonderful thing. It protects someone from, from growing things or keeping livestock from nuisance complaints. It is not an exemption from health regulations and it's not an exemption you know, from, from noise ordinances. Mm -hmm. Our regulations stay in place and even the proponents of the right to farm article understand completely and support that. No, it's not appropriate in a very dense neighborhood with you know, quarter acre lots and smaller to have a rooster. That's not appropriate. It's going to wake everyone up, and everyone's going to hear about it. We're going to have another chew situation on our hands. We just had one lady that had um, a couple of her neighbors complain. She called me. I felt very bad because she was really upset. She goes, well, why didn't they just come to me? And, you know, I wasn't supposed to have a rooster, but one of them grew into one. And, and she goes, and then, you know, the crowing, and it started to bother me, too. And she ended up, you know, rehoming that rooster. So good for her that she, you know, took it upon herself. But you know, no one's ever going to look kindly on being woken up at 4:30 in the morning in the summer. Oh, no. you, you have, none of the board members would appreciate it. No one mm -hmm. else would appreciate it. So, right to farm is a wonderful thing, but it's not an exemption from you know. It doesn't mean I can do whatever I want. It doesn't mean you can stockpile manure, for mm -hmm. example, and make it smell and make it unsavory and everything else. It just means someone can't complain for the sheer fact that you have chickens. Well, I don't like his chickens over there, so I don't want him to have. Them. Mm -hmm. That's that would be a nuisance complaint that you cannot complain about with right to farm. You can't complain because you can smell someone's horses. Not manure, not unhealthy things, but, well, I see horses and they have flies and I smell them. That would be the kind of thing that would be a nuisance complaint and not allowed. Mm -hmm. So, and I agree with you, I think the backyard chickens thing is going to become bigger. Um, and I'm, I'm actually toying around with, in all my spare time, ha ha ha, that if I did have some time to write up, you know, some questions people ought to ask themselves before becoming backyard chicken keepers. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks this is glamorous and you're going to have a dozen eggs every day and everything else. And, and having had chickens myself, and I will never have them again because I once was enough for me. And Sheila, as you know, keeps chickens on a regular basis. That, I didn't know that. Yep, people become attached to them and they're not pets. And I, I can't reiterate that enough and I think Sheila would back me up on this. There's nothing fun like chasing your chicken up a tree because it got out and decided to go up there and you have to try and get it in for the night. And then if something, God forbid, breaks into your coop, I can't tell you how many crying mm -hmm. people I've seen at the window. Um, because chickens are very low on the food chain, and there's nothing more upsetting to a family that they've named their little pet flock of chickens, and they come out, and quite graphically, they come out to, often predators like to rip all their heads off. Mm -hmm. And that's not something pleasant for a child to see. It's not something that someone wants to see. And these kinds of things do occur daily. You know, we, we have fisher cats, we have raccoons, we have a lot of significant predators. Um, so backyard chicken keeping is not for someone that wants a cute fluffy pet because it doesn't usually work out that way. And then of course there's just the natural attrition. I won't speak for Sheila, but I would go out and just find one just killed over for no apparent reason whatsoever, fully intact, and that just happens with them. It's just a fact of life. It's not like having a cat or a dog. Mm -hmm. I don't know, do you have anything to add? I've had all those scenarios. <laughs> she's she's had the gamut. We've had to talk about. I had, I had a chicken things. like just collapsed in the middle of the doorway, and the other chickens just walked over it. And they will, they will do that. Well, I had a crow so get one, or camera. and it was a pet. Like you know, my son Billy Ray was a mm -hmm. Polish and Billy Ray, 
Follow the rim. Follow him anyway. Sat in his shoulder. Anyway. For all those reasons that you just cited, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and compounded with the fact that you're thinking in your spare time, you'd like to write up some things to th yep. for a potential chicken owner to think about. Yep. Uh, I think there should be a fee for. One chicken. I do too. That, that's much why like we raise the question. I have dog license. I, have, yeah. I right. pay a fee for my dog. Right. But what happens to these? So okay. So people, our residents out there, have in their possession mm -hmm. on their property the chickens. Yep. Under the number nine. Yep. Okay. We don't know who they are. Yep. So They're still supposed to get a license. See, understand that, that okay. all these So can licenses, you explain this to these nice yeah. people of Pembroke? So the reason, that everyone thinks the licenses are to get money from people, actually that has nothing to do with it. The whole purpose for licensing your livestock is to have it inspected once a year and to make sure that it's <coughs> disease free. <coughs> because if your livestock is not inspected and cannot be ascertained by the state, God forbid, if we have a breakout, that your livestock is disease free. And this has happened in Massachusetts, the state can come in and extenuate, ex, ex, exterminate? It will exterminate, but there's ex, extenuate. Extenuating circumstances? No, no, it, um, it, it's when they take all the air away. They can destroy your livestock, all of them. They had to do it with two two major coops in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Exenuate, what, what, no, I'm saying the word wrong. It's when they, the, the animals are no longer, we'll leave it politely there. Because if you cannot prove that your animals are free of from disease and have not been exposed to it, it's all about human health outbreak. Right. For example, the avian flu. Mm -hmm. For example, the swine flu. Mm -hmm. So most people feel this is about tracking chickens and keeping track of animals and everything else, and it is. But it's for the purposes of human disease prevention. Right. It's not actually for the benefit of the animals. Is this an annual fee? It is an annual thing. Not one time. And we did have, and actually the, the next question I always get asked is, has that ever happened in Pembroke? Yes, it did. Um, we had two goats come out of an auction. Um, they were not supposed to be for keeping alive. They were supposed to be for consumption because something had happened to the original herd. And unfortunately, it, it's unclear at this point if the dealer was not completely forthright in, um, in passing along these goats or if the people receiving the goats just weren't honest with that these, these these goats were carrying disease. There was a whole state tracking. I had to certify with a vet that these animals were put down and, and, and that information got back to the state. So the next question everyone is asked, well that's never happened in Pembroke. Yes it has. It has and it happened uh, two years ago. Where there was a potential for children to become ill from these goats. Right? So, so a couple things we need to consider is what would a potential fee for having less than and that number of one to nine chickens? I mean, that could we charge that could be that chicken. could be our current structure is fifty cents a chicken. But it oh, could be it, it be could be anything. Chicken. It could become less than a dozen. We don't have to be one no. to nine. So no. a question is, what would be an appropriate number? Should there be a fee of zero? Should there be a fee? And what should be the maximum right. fee? So there's a few things. The, on the, the fee table. structure is steps. confusing, though. Excuse me. The fee structure is confusing. Yeah, right. We need to fix that. Because confusing? Confusing. Because confusing. zero to nine is free, right? But then when you have the tenth chicken, you're supposed to pay for all the chickens. And, and then people will bring in 50 cents, cents to pay for the one that's over nine. No. Yeah. Right. But, that, but it's... And again, whether it's intentional or unintentional, that's... I just think we have to fix it. And so we need to it. tweak the language in Correct. addition, you know, get rid of the semantics behind yeah. the language, but also Correct. come up with a, a fee structure. I, I, and do we want to increase it? At, at this point, the cost of everything is going up. Do we want to raise the cap from 25 to 30? Do we want to raise the price on anything? I, I think it should be a bucket chicken. Now, wait a minute. Let's not go crazy. <laughs> bucket chicken? Bucket chicken. You're right. You have an upset chicken owner now. I will never own a, chickens again. I, I found them chicken. way too much of a pain in the back. 50 cents a chicken? Oh, and you know, a maximum fee, should there be a minimum fee? Um, that's an excellent point. Know. Keep in mind, if someone has three chickens, I have to make the same visit to inspect them yeah, right, as I, I do to someone that has course. five horses. Mm -hmm. I can't believe the maximum fee is $25. To that, me that that's across all species though, right? The yes, man? that is across all species. So if I have a horse, a pig... If you have a horse, two goats, a llama, and ten chickens, the maximum you're going to pay is $25. Really? Yeah. We, we should... T but I emailed the board. If you if you go back through your emails and I can well, if you look at some it. of the other fees for yeah. for the tattoo power oh, yeah. for you oh, know yeah. for the 
yeah. for um, the funeral home. Yeah. I mean, twenty five dollars is not in line with some of the other fees that we charge. At least. Correct. I mean, we have to have our dog and, and dogs and licensed. Correct. And but a single a hunter. single dog, yeah. fixed dog, is seven dollars. Right. A single dog. So you have some valid points. Perfect. But I can email the board all the regulations so you can kind of look through it. All the fees are on the last page, and you can kind of pull that apart and, and see what you'd like to and, change. And about. not. And I'm going to. Not to sound silly, but would it be, you know. When you said that's all animals, should we break be breaking it up a little bit between chickens and it's horses? Broken up, it's broken up among the fee structure, but the idea was we capped it at twenty five, so no one would pay more than that. Twenty five a household. A household. So you could raise that cap, but yes, the horses are ten dollars each, for example. You know, we didn't make every animal the same price, but we capped a household. Horses are so, twenty five, aren't they? No, horses are ten. I thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the point All is, right. <coughs> through yeah. that, uh, the point is, I'm raising the issue to the board because I think it's something that needs to be tweaked. Yeah. That that was written as we discussed in 2001, and the fee structure never really changed. So we, we're we're 16 years out of date. Okay. So I'd like to have a discussion um, for next uh, meeting, the 19th. A discussion, um, and if all board members um, will take a look at the current fee structures that we have now and be prepared to give their opinions, um, discussion, and I'm going to pull the other towns and see what they charge. Yeah, that'd be good because I think it's time that we take a look at these fees. Um, okay, Mr. Fine, would you like to update the board on Q4 community? Committee status. Sure. The Q. I reached out to Lou Stone, the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, although he's no longer actually now that the board is reopened. But uh, Lou confirmed what I had thought: the Q4 ballot committee was put together to decide what to do with retail. Uh, marijuana shops in Pembroke. We are not look so we have effectively been dis disbanded. So it's not to look at other issues. How regarding about suspended? Marijuana. Suspended. Wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that be a better thing? Because we don't know when we might vis visit this. Uh, again. Suspended. Sure. As the article passed at town meeting. Correct. So we we are no longer. Oh, so you have no committee that you're on. Well, let let's. Let's remember what the, the, the conversation is about, the Marijuana Committee, so it's no longer together. Okay. Correct. Okay. So it's been disbanded and or, 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 or suspended. Or suspended. Suspended if, uh, and or further you know, notice. You okay. know, she's full of colloquial, colloquial, that. I'm you, loquacious. You, I was thinking of colloquial. Okay, enough with these big words, yeah. please. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm running out of money for these three dollar words. Um, okay, so how about the chicken? plastic bag initiative? Well, has any possibility of a I'm subcommittee? Not, I'm not sure. I, I read the agenda fine to update the board on possible subcommittee. I know two weeks ago when the three of us were talking about what should Pembroke consider doing, I made the suggestion of forming a subcommittee. Mm -hmm. I still stand by that. I've actually had two people who have reached out to me. Wonderful. I don't know how. Lisa Cully. Um, two people have reached out to me and expressed an interest if we were to form a subcommittee. Um, sitting on the trash and recycling subcommittee, as as our current health agent also sat on, I thought we did a lot of things well and a lot of things could and should have done better. Uh, one of the things, and I don't know this, Lisa. I don't know how we how we actively recruit. A subcommittee. I don't know if it would be best to start it in the fall if maybe people are, you know, vacationing in the summer and they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. want to I can convert. tell you, starting one in the summer is is a death knell to any committee because most um, people will be vacationing and everything. So else. I I think if the other board members are agree that we should do this, we should kind of come up with what would be a good number, what would be a recruiting mechanism, and I think it would be important very important to come what are the goals of the other potential <coughs> committee. For instance, it's not just to look at what Pembroke should do. People should look at is it, is it even something that would be viable? Should Pembroke consider it? Mm -hmm. 
and people should spend a lot of time on that. I would, and, and yeah. If we should consider it, how might it look? Um, well, I, I would like to have you take the ball and run with that and be the one that <coughs> looks into getting people, finding out what they want, leading, leading this um, subcommittee and coming back to the board um, you know, if, it, if you're starting in October, but definitely doing the pros and cons and, and, and getting together information because, again, is this going to be a initiative that is kept with the Board of Health that we make a decision or do we open it up to, you know, a town meeting floor? If I was Mr. Fine, what I would do is do a little bit of research on what communities have done it. I would go back to the Board of Selectmen, and the reason I go back to the Board of Selectmen is obviously the viewership mm -hmm. and the republication of a, of a Board of Selectmen meeting is far greater than a Board of Health meeting. Sorry to break that to you. Um, and I would say to the Selectmen, you've done some research. <coughs> I would bring the results of the survey monkey, and I would say that it was close, but there seems to be the, the majority would be pushing for a plastic bag and or styrofoam's bag. And if I were Mr. Fine, I would make my pitch directly to the public themselves. Is anyone interested in working with me on this topic, either for or against it? They would be willing to sit down and have a few meetings and discuss what, if any, article we might consider bringing to town meeting floor. I'm not telling you that's what to do. I'm just saying if I was you and I was tasked with this, that's why I would try it. Um, I agree in spirit with what most of you said, where I would potentially not take exception, Lisa, but I don't know if it's a town meeting floor issue, or I don't know if, if a subcommittee is formed and the results of that committee presents it to the Board of Health. I mean, we were elected to make certain decisions, and, mm -hmm. and there are some that are we, we would like the town to weigh on. But I, I wouldn't say right now this should absolutely be headed to town meeting floor. I, I, I don't feel comfortable in the, in the votes of this survey, Monkey the results that came back and how close it was to, as a board, make a decision for the people of Pembroke without them having their voices heard. I agree a thousand percent. I wouldn't want the Board of Health to make a decision based upon serving monkey either. But I think if we went through forming, if there was a, a subcommittee that, you know, seven or nine members consisted of the residents of the town and they researched this and came up with a proposal, pro or con, what it would mm -hmm. look like, and that potentially got presented to the Board of Health, I think the Board of Health could make that decision. I'm, I'm not opposed to it going to town meeting mm -hmm. floor, but I wouldn't blanket say right now that it should go to town meeting floor. That's just me. Okay. So. But there's three of us. Yeah, well, there's right. two of us sitting here right now, and it's on the agenda. So. so I will um, I will move forward and do some research and see what we can come up with about putting together a subcommittee regarding a plastic ban Perfect. project. Okay. And as plastic I explained at, at the last meeting, I'm already involved in a another um, time consuming uh, committee within the town. Um, I don't think it's fair to myself or my family to be on another board or another committee of another Ooh. evening um, spent away. So I um, appreciate you taking the ball on this and Happy to. running with it. Okay? Unless there is anything further that anybody wants to sit here and discuss further. Sorry. Hearing none. I would like to make a motion to at 8.10 p.m. to adjourn this meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can you hit that record button now, Karen? Okay.